Hello and welcome to Knife Delights. Hey, it's time for a way back Wednesday. And this open tag is brought to us by the man, the legend, the connoisseur of cutlery himself, Warthog. Hey, Rick, thank you so much for uh, starting this open tag. You know, I love the uh, old knives, the history of old knives. Way back Wednesday uh, just fills my passion. Thank you so much, sir. And this is going to be an exciting way back Wednesday because Big J, over there, Big J's Knives, he sent me this excellent specimen of an old knife. This is a Camillus Engineer's Knife. So this knife is on loan to me. It's a very special knife. It has a backstory to it. Um, I believe, uh, and Big J, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but you got this at a yard sale or a yard sale or a state sale was kind of in bad condition. You got it home, cleaned it up, and uh, offered to take it back uh, to the person that sold it to you, the, I guess the wife of an Army veteran, and she said, no, it's in the right hands, and I have to agree. Having it in your hands, Big J, is great, and it's even greater here that you let me hold this wonderful piece of history right here. I am just so excited. Thanks, Big J. So let's start out with some terms here. So the term engineer or camp knife can be viewed as an army nomenclature, but for the Navy, they use the term utility knife. Now, I'm going to just bring out another style of knife here. This is a knife here that you may be familiar with. And you may know of it as a uh, mariner's knife or a yachtsman's knife. But in the Navy, this was known as a bosun's knife. And the bosun's mates were the ones that uh, they were on the deck crew, took care of the outside skin of the ship. They uh, handled lines, ropes. And so this was known as a bosun's knife. That's not an official name. It's just what we called it in the Navy. So when it comes to this, although Camillus did officially name it a, an engineer knife, it is also known as a camp style knife, or if you get right down to it, a scout knife. Now there's a difference between a scout knife and a boy scout knife. Boy scout knife is, just means it's a scout knife that was officially licensed by the BSA. But the frames, the blades, and everything else are pretty much all the same. I also want to start out with this caveat, which I should uh, start out with on more of my videos is I try to do uh, the best research I can and hopefully the information I'm getting is reliable. If somebody out there has uh, alternate information, conflicting information, please provide it in the uh, comments below and or send me an email if you know anything more about this knife or the other knives that I review. As an armchair or amateur historian, I know that some, there are sometimes things out there that we all take as true and then we find out it's uh, urban legend or myth. So please help keep me honest, but I do the best I can to verify the information that I have. So when we look at this knife here, um, we've, we've got a clevis here or bale, non-removable. We've got steel bolsters. And uh, let me see here. Let's just make sure those are steel. That's what they're supposed to be anyway. Oh yeah, that's steel. Steel bolsters. Okay. So we do have uh, steel threaded bolsters. We have that nice USA shield. And as you can see, we have uh, brass liners. Now the covers on here are bone. They're a jig bone. I had one... Uh, Listing on an auction site uh, refer to this as Rogers bone. And I have not heard of that term. I don't know if that's the particular jigging style or not. You can also see on this and some of the old scout or boy scout knives, they will refer to this as stag. But it's, what it really was was bone stag. So it is bone. It's not really stag. So these could be what's considered to be bone stag covers also. See how confusing it all gets? 
But now, you know, Big J was wondering about when this knife was dated. You know, when was it made? And so I just thought I'd go through some of the clues here that I use in dating a particular knife. Now, if you're online and, and searching, sometimes you can run across an old knife catalog or an advertisement, and it can help you date the knife. Usually the first place I start is with the tang stamp. I don't know how well it'll show up. I'll put a, I'll insert a picture here, but it's a four-line tang stamp that says uh, Camillus, and then next line Cutlery Company, next line Camillus New York, and then USA. So this is a four-line tang stamp. And the best estimate is that this tang stamp was uh, used from the early 30s to the mid 40s. Now, some other things that uh, help date this knife. As I mentioned, the brass liners. And the information I have sometime around 1942, because of the war going on and the war effort, um, you know, there was kind of a moratorium on using brass for, for manufacturing, and so they switched to uh, steel liners. So as you can see, these are brass liners. So that is one clue that this is prior to 1942 or 1943. Another little clue we have here is this can opener. See that funky can opener? And we're going to get back to this a little bit. Here is a, let's see, is this one it here? Yeah. This is a modern example, more modern example of a Camillus scout knife or, or camp knife. Same pattern, but you can see it's got the jig dowel run and the bolsters are not threaded. But the big difference is what's called the Eagle Beak can opener. And supposedly the contract was changed in around 1943 to change from this old version to the Eagle Beak version. And one of the reasons was, is I guess these were very weak and they tended to break. Now, I want to pull out something here that gets confusing because they talk about the two-piece and... In the article I read, and they were referring to this as the two-piece, but if you look at it, it's really one piece. So, I have an old Remington uh, Boy Scout knife here. I think this is a good example here. And you can see it has a very, very similar uh, can opener to it, but if you look at it, you can see this line right down here. It looks like this is actually two pieces put together. So that's just another little clue or another little distinction between perhaps a two piece and a one piece of the old style. I'm not sure what they were what they were referring to when they said one piece or two piece. But irregardless, so along with the fact that the liners are brass and we know around 42 or so uh, they stopped using brass and the fact that the the can opener was changed i think it was actually changed in the contract because there were several uh, companies i think pal and imperial and such all made knives just like this now i do want to point out before i forget you talk about patina Look at that patina on that blade. I have an older uh, Boy Scout knife uh, made by Ulster back in the 70s. And it's got very similar, you know, nice even patina to it. Yeah, that's a nice example of nice natural patina. Other things you can look for, not so much on this particular knife, but dating knives in general like with camp knives. Um, again, I'll go back to the to the Remingtons here real quick. 
It does not apply to these Camillus that I know of. But when I was trying to date these Remington knives, I found out that you can look at these uh, cap lifters and there's a difference. If you see there in the later model, you see it's a, there's a concave indentation there. And on this one, it's a little different. So that was one way to date these old knives. Um, also the fact this one on the, on the right had a threaded bolster and this one did not. So these are all little clues as you're doing your research. Uh, these both had non-removable bales just like here except the bales are missing. The bales came off or broke off. Some more little clues as you're looking. Okay, as we go back to the engineer's knife here, we can see there's a little cut out there, and that allows for the uh, can opener to fold shut. A little notch there. And then if you look over on this side, you have what's called a nail notch. So it's cut out there, so you can get in there with your nail and pull out the uh, punch. So another clue in dating knives sometimes, and I'm going to bring the Remingtons back just for an example. Again, these both had the same, almost the same style of the, of the two-piece, what I call the two-piece can opener. However, look on, look on this one. See how that notch comes at a 90 degree angle? So it folds over, so you've got the little notch there, you can just pull it open. Where on this one, it has the little cutout, because it's the little tab is bent that way. Hence, you still need the notch to get to it. So again, just a couple more clues when you're going through old knives and you're reading online. If they, if they show a picture, has no notch there, and one has a notch, and the one you have has a notch, that's one way to distinguish that you're not looking at the right picture, I guess. I hope I'm not confusing everybody too much, but those are just some of the little clues that you look for. So, I think this wraps it up. Oh, I do have this statement. Now, this was uh, information I found... Uh, by uh, there was a book by Michael Sylvie. And I found this quote online. Uh, Michael Sylvie wrote a book called Pocket Knives of the United States Military. And in describing this knife, he said, This is a World War II engineer's knife used by both the Navy and the U.S. Army. The Navy spec number was 41-J-4, and the Army spec number was 17-170. The military name is knife, comma, pocket, comma, engineer, comma, four blade with clevis. Camillus made 1.7 million of these for the U.S. Navy and 3.2 million for the U.S. Army. So that's, uh, thank you, uh, Michael Silvey. I think that's pretty authoritative uh, information there and reliable information. So we'll just take one more glance at this wonderful knife. Very well constructed. Just beautiful. Nice spear point blade. Of course, it's been sharpened down. It got used. But yeah, just a beautiful knife. Big J, I cannot thank you enough. And for all of you that are interested in old knives, um, I do have a playlist. I'll put a link here on the end screen. I have a playlist of slip joint knives, and it contains a lot of these old pocket knives on there in my reviews. So again, until next time, everyone, please go out and have a very delightful day.